Kajit, could you be any more loud? Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Megan Tennant, in case you didn't already know, and today we're talking about Google Docs again. Yeah, so about a month ago I did a video on Google Docs, and as with all the tutorial demo type videos I do, I predicted the view count of that video to fall around 150 to 200 views. And then this happened. Now, shout out to Cam over at Wolfshot Publishing because he did give me a shout out in his video about apps for writers and linked people to the Google Docs video, so I'm sure that was responsible for some of that spike. But you guys were overall a lot more interested in Google Docs than I expected. Now in that Google Docs video, I asked if you wanted me to do a Google add-ons video. I wish I had a guy in my life that would stop me before I did something stupid. If you guys would like to see a video covering some of the best add-ons for writers, let me know in a comment down below. Yeah. And you guys overwhelmingly said yes, which at the time I thought was what I wanted. Then I started trying to script that video. There's a whole add-on section that you can access where you can find all sorts of neat things that can completely change your writing process. All sorts of extraordinary things. You liar! Google Docs add-ons? Not the best. No, but for the last month I have been downloading them and testing them and I have a very short list, but the list is too short for an entire video. So I'm gonna supplement it with something much more exciting, which is tips and tricks for Google Docs, which I discovered over my last month of doing this deep dive. I'll leave timestamps down below in the description, but these tips and tricks I think are more exciting, so I'm gonna start with those. So first off, we have automatic substitution. Now you can access this through the preferences button under tools. And this can be super convenient for things that just don't have a key, such as the M dash. You can also use this method to massively speed up your writing because you can replace longer words that you frequently use with an abbreviation and have it auto replace. When you're writing that kind of name out over and over again, those seconds add up and can save you some time. It won't apply the switch if the abbreviation is part of another word, only if there's a space after the abbreviation. If it replaces it and that's not what you wanted in that scenario, you just have to do one backspace and it takes it off. Next up, we have a built-in dictionary. For those of you who cannot be trusted to open a new tab, because as soon as you open the new tab, you discover that you've been in Twitter for five minutes somehow. Magic, right? I know how that works. So you can access this at any time by just highlighting the word you want the definition of and then right clicking and then go down to define. And this will bring up a definition right on the side, super convenient. And if you have a word that you're using way too often cause you're like me and apparently I only know like one word for all things, then you can do this to quickly find some synonyms. Next up we have a drawing tool. This doesn't work so much for writing your actual book, but it does work very well for world building and plotting and anything like that. And basically the way this tool works is you just go up and you do insert and you hit drawing and that'll bring up this drawing pad. So this is great for if you wanna sketch out a quick idea to show future you what you meant because if you're anything like me, past me always thinks future me is gonna understand things that future me never understands. So this can help with that. And if you're attached to the images or you wanna use them somewhere else, you can export them to JPEG, which is super convenient. Next up, we have transferring formatting. This is a button that I never thought to question what it did. I don't know what that says about me. So this is the little paint roller up in the corner and basically all you do is you highlight a piece of text where you want to transfer that formatting to another piece of text and then you just click the little paint roller and then you roll it over the text you wanna be formatted. Cause she's feeling sassy. Don't meow into the mic now. No, if you wanna come up, you can come up, but then you have to stay. Cause if you jump down in the middle of me talking, then I have to start over or I have to leave it in and be repetitive. And why do you always do this? Excuse me, those are claws. Really? Really, Kajit? 
Now up next we have drag and drop keep notes. So one of the nice things about keep notes is once you take a note, you can just drag and drop it straight into your Google Doc and it will just turn right into text. Now one of the really cool things about this is that the keep notes has an app. So for those of you guys who love to write on your phones, write down the scene as you think of it, and then it instantly updates to the Keep Notes in the Google Docs app. So then you just go into whatever section you were writing the scene for, and all you have to do is drag and drop it straight into your folder, and whatever you wrote on your phone is there. Because Google Docs is available everywhere, you could also just write in it directly from your phone. But by doing it this way with Keep Notes, it's much easier to just shuffle it into where it belongs later. Next up, we have Search Menus. If you just go down to Help, you'll have a search box right there, and you can search for anything you want. Next up, we have Add Fonts. Why? Because defaults are boring. Apparently, I've actually never used this. So all you have to do is go down to the fonts drop down and just at the very top there's add fonts and there's a ton more Google Docs fonts right there built in that you can activate. You know, I keep seeing this Comic Sans thing going around and you guys swear by it, but I just, I can't put my dignity aside long enough to try it. Next up we have drag and drop. If you ever want to rearrange a sentence, just highlight what you want to move click shift, and then you can just drag it to wherever you want to move it to. Just drag and drop. Next up, we have learn keyboard shortcuts. You can find them under help. And this is just something where if you have some spare time one day, look it over and try to memorize them because you don't think that knowing those shortcuts will help much, but those little seconds here and there, again, really add up. Voice typing, dictation. This is something that a lot of people find very helpful. It's a lot faster, which means their thoughts can keep up with the typing, which means they can keep their flow better. And I can't do this because saying the punctuation out loud trips me up and maybe I'd get used to it eventually, but I haven't worked on that yet. So this is an option if you are a writer who likes dictation. Viewing and suggesting as a way of protecting final drafts. I really like this because there's sometimes where I want to edit, but maybe I'm like, I'm sick. Or you know those moods that we get in as writers where you just want to backspace everything, all of it. You come back maybe a week later when you've calmed down and you discover that all of that hard work is gone. Now, of course, Google Docs has the history feature I talked about in my first video, so it's not really gone. But by using the suggestion feature, it's just a simple click of accept or reject for the changes that you've made. This is also good for if you're proofing a final draft and you don't want to accidentally click somewhere and leave a letter. So by setting the document to viewing mode, it won't let you edit even if you try. Ah, that's the mic. <laughs> Okay, so because I'm a genius and I didn't think to recheck the audio after poking the mic multiple times for, you know, Megan reasons, I guess, I have no audio for the rest of this footage and rather than refilming everything, I'm just gonna go full screen share. Next up we have Explore, which can be accessed at any time via right click or tools. This can be used for a few things. First off, you can insert images straight from the Explore, so it works kind of like a browser. You do a search, it will return images. I should note that it does apply the labeled for reuse filter to images, so there are less options, but you are allowed to use them, so that's a little perk to that. Explore also works as a web browser where you can search just general things. It opens links in new tabs, but you can also generally get an answer just from the little description under each search result. So this again can be helpful for those of you who cannot be trusted to open a new tab and search things. Next up we have templates, kind of a pain in the ass, but basically because there's no way to save your preferences for text size or font, you can have a folder titled templates and in this you can have files set to specifics you commonly use such as something titled chapter or standard doc and you can set these up to what you want those to be. And then when you're starting a new doc, rather than starting an actual new one, just copy and rename one of these. And in that way it will serve as a sort of template. Alright, and now for what was supposed to be the main attraction of this entire video. The add-ons. We have a total of four. Yay! The first one on the list 
It's edit office docs in Google Docs. So this is an extension, so I'll throw a link in the description box down below so you can get to it. But basically, Google doesn't have a built-in way in their docs that allows you to edit Microsoft Office documents. So this extension was developed by Google and will supposedly let you just edit Office documents without needing to convert them back and forth. Next up, screenplay formatter. And I know most of you don't care about this, but back when I dabbled in short films, I used this and it was so helpful. And a few of you are screenwriters, so I figured I'd mention it. And basically it just gives you easy buttons that insert the kind of things that you would need to use in a script. Next up, we have the SAS Writing Revisor. I almost cut this one from the list because although it's a very powerful tool with great writing applications, it also has so many annoying foresights. Things that the developers really should have thought of and just didn't. So although this can be really helpful, there's a ton of noise you have to search through to get to the information you need. So it can be very annoying. So some of the features that this has that can be really helpful are things like the repetitive word option, which highlights words that are repeated often. The problem with this is that there's no way to add words to a whitelist. And so it catches words like and, and her, and my. So many of the features of this add-on are like that, where they do pull up valuable information that can help you better your writing, but they also complain about things that you just can't fix. One of the other features of this that I think could actually be helpful is the feature to find jargon and cliches, which finds things that you might not think of as being cliché. Phrases that are just built into our language, things like deer in the headlights. So yeah, give this add-on a try, but keep in mind Again, there is so much noise to filter through to get to the useful things. So it can be a bit of a time commitment. And last and probably least is Writer's Highlighter. So one of the big perks of this is when paired with a simple spreadsheet link, this will go through and highlight any words in your spreadsheet. During your editing phase, this can be super helpful because you can fill in the spreadsheet with words you commonly overuse. And then this is also a good place to put words you know you commonly misspell that maybe the spell check misses. For example, in Aletheia, I kept spelling peak as peak like a mountain and a full round of professional editing didn't catch it despite around 22 occurrences. So that's now a word on my list to always check. Now this add-on says that it works with regex. Regex is a way to kind of filter words by very detailed specifics and Josh works full time as a programmer and I for quite a few years worked full time as a programmer. Neither of us could get it to work and we came to the conclusion that it's just full on broken. So that's really annoying. And after that I kind of stopped testing out the features of this add-on but there are a couple others that you might want to try out see if you can get them to work. The last one I'll mention for this is this one button, this highlight sentences, will select a color based on the number of words in that sentence. This is good because writing reads much more professionally and flows a lot better if your sentences have variations in length. And that was literally it for the add-ons. So use them with caution, always back up your work, and know that these are not perfect. Enjoy this video of Khajiit because I'm doing just audio for this outro so you can watch Khajiit being cute and distracting while I tried to film. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and a share. It really helps this channel grow. We appreciate it. Subscribe if you aren't already and if you are, hit that bell. If you like dark dystopian novels, especially of the new adult variety, you can find Aletheia in hardcover paperback and ebook. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. Say you